And that was kind of the way the shoot was. You know, there was a lot of improv uh, going on, and, uh, and actors just feeling kind of free. And and um, that, that's one thing that's uh, sort of notable about the way uh, Paul Thomas Anderson works is is uh, the freedom that he gives to his actors. The writing's great. Uh, of course, we we always sort of say the lines and stuff, but but if you have an idea, or you have a line to throw in, or you have a moment, or something happens, or if something happens by mistake, you kind of roll with it, and that's that was what he encouraged, you know, that, that spontaneity and that that freedom, and that's that's what what, what was so fun about working on uh, Boogie Nights. You know. Well, I've known Tom a while, and I've certainly complimented him before, but you're so good in this movie, Tom. You really are, and you're in the midst. <laughs> You're amongst one of the most amazing ensemble casts. Yeah. And a lot of young actors, I think, would have got swallowed up in there. So I just think it's a testament to your talent that this was your breakout movie and you really, people really remember you from it. Yeah, I, I, got, I got lucky, you know, uh, uh, by, uh, running into, by running into this film, you know, early on. It, it spoils you, though, you know, because then, you know, cause you're an actor and you have to work and you gotta go out and then, and then you know, you can move out of your apartment, but now you've got a Mercedes, you know, or, you know now you've got to pay for the Mercedes, or, you know, then you become like a working person, which, uh, which I've always kind of hated, you know? <laughs> and that's why I became an actor to begin with, so I didn't have to work, and then suddenly you find, you know, if you want to have a life, if you ever want to have a kid, and, and uh, you know, do that and stuff and that people do. Um, you, you you have to you have to work, you know, and it, it's a piss me off because <laughs> the the movies are few and far between, you know, that uh, that really inspire you or, or allow you to do uh, some some, uh, some fun stuff. But they come along, you know. They're just like uh, Robert Duvall said, you know, one, one for the art, one for the condo. <laughs> <laughs> this one was definitely for the art. What else? Now, a lot of, you talked about the freedom that Paul uh, gives you on set, but a lot of his scenes are so, you know, the, the photography is so choreographed. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about blocking one of those sequences where he knows visually he's going to do something really complicated, but how does he incorporate you and give you that freedom? Yeah, it's a, a kind of a tricky thing, you know. I, I think that, uh, you know, you, you, you afford actors as much freedom as you can uh, when you can. So if it's a shot where guys are sitting around a table, um, uh, you know, snorting blow, and, and, and you've got a, and you, the camera, and you look, I want to spin the camera around, I'm just going to keep it going. And until we run out of film, and then we're going to reload, and you know, so you do the scene, and then when the scene's over, you just start the scene up again, and, and just keep going. You know, we're, we're just going to, we'll stop when we, uh, and literally, if the, wherever the camera stopped, when it was time to reload, that's where the camera stopped, they reload, Roll again, boom! They pick it up right from there, and and that's really fun. And you have a lot of freedom. And you can try and stuff and throw out lines and drop shit on the floor and crawl under the table and do whatever the fuck you want, right? But because because then when it's time to do a huge steady cam choreographed party scene, and you've work and you've got a hundred moving parts, and it's a uh, you know four or five minute take or whatever it was, um, then it becomes very specific. So uh, you kind of, you know, it's kind of the trade-off. You're like, okay, I know that when the camera comes around the corner, I've got to, you know, do this, and it becomes like a dance. And, and that becomes fun too, but the, the process of getting there is also very improvisatory. You know, I, I think it's a matter of really utilizing rehearsal uh, and giving the actors the freedom to do whatever the hell they want and watching and then picking you can kind of cherry pick the moments and then you can create your shots based on what you see what the actors are doing which believe it or not is a different way of working than most directors you know you, you don't I mean I don't even know why you show up in the morning you know just get in get into makeup and then just tell me where to stand and that, and that's you know how it's done in, in a lot of the time but a good director will uh, always sort of at least give you the illusion that you're uh, <laughs> that you're 
kind of do what you want to do, you know. Um, but but every good director that I've worked with is always based what they're going to do uh, off of what they see the actors do without any direction at all, you know. Just go. The direction is go. Uh, and, that, and that's always a sign of a, of a good director. It can, because you, you want, you know, the, you just want it to be as spontaneous and as sort of motivated by the characters as, as possible, you know. And then if you get a guy sort of standing in a shadow, you can, hey, can you, can you take a couple of feet to your step over to the right, you know, maybe by the window? Um, and you can kind of nudge people around and, and, and sort of get it, get it, get it into a, a shape. Does that answer the, I forgot what the question was. Do you have any stories about some of the uh, main actors you worked with? Maybe Burt Reynolds? <laughs> yeah, pause, please. Um, no, I, I, you know, I was a young guy. I didn't know a lot of people. And, um, and uh, you know, I made, made a lot of friends on that movie. Um, but for me, it was all like one big, you know, it was amazing you know, just to watch this, this movie get made. I hadn't seen that a lot. And, uh, and then the, the, the spontaneity and the, the fun that everybody was having just made it all the more exciting. Um, speaking of Burt Reynolds, we did, a, we did a scene at the, well, first of all, I, you know, never, never assume that you've got, uh, uh, you know, the day off. Because I thought I had a three-day weekend, we're going to shoot this party scene um, where Dirk Diggler can't get it up, and he comes out, and, and they're around the pool, and he's like, "It's my big dick, and we're going to fucking shoot right now," right? And um, and they're like, "You know, go home. You know, take it easy, Dirk. Go, go home." And then and then there's a kind of like a, a, a tussle ensues, and and uh, and I'm just in the background. You know, I wasn't even in the damn scene to begin with, but. So I thought I had the day off, so I had a three-day week, and I flew to New York. Um, well, <laughs> I Harlow, <laughs> baby, stick your tongue out at me. So I flew to New York to see a, to see a friend, and, and as soon as I got off the plane, uh, I got a message on my phone saying, your call time is at 5 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Lit literally, had to turn around, back from my friend's apartment, catch a cab, go back to the airport, buy, buy a ticket on the red eye, and fly back to LA. I landed in LA, uh, you know, early in the morning, and uh, took a cab to, to set, where I was then sort of in the background of, of this fucking scene. <laughs> but it was actually kind of cool because you know, you're never really in the background of Paul Thomas Anderson film. I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm just supposed to be sitting with Dirk Diggler, and we're supposed to be like, you know, like cutting up some shit. And uh, and I knew some speed dealers at the time, so <laughs> and I yeah. so and I knew that and I knew that like the language that they used with this uh, with this stuff, and I started throwing that into the into the the scene, and you, and it's in the scene, whatever crazy crap, it's some, something about carpet dope. <laughs> something about carpet dope. It, it, so I, I just started spouting that stuff off, and, and that ended up in the movie, so that was cool. 